As a researcher, I study how our body stays healthy because of our health defense systems. These defenses include our circulation, our stem cells, our healthy gut bacteria, our DNA, and our immune system. My work is focused on understanding how foods can help us fight disease by activating these health defenses. What I've discovered is that when it comes to food and health, it's not just about the food. It's about our, how our body responds to what we put inside it. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. Dr. Lee has just mentioned the five critical defenses our bodies need, circulation, stem cells, healthy gut bacteria, DNA, and immune system. These are the pillars of our health that protect us from diseases and promote longevity. But who is Dr. William Lee, and why should we listen to him? Dr. Lee is a renowned physician, scientist, and author known for his trailblazing research in the field of medical science. He has dedicated his career to understanding how the body's natural defenses can be optimized through diet and lifestyle. With his extensive background and expertise, Dr. Lee has helped countless individuals improve their health by focusing on food as medicine. His research has been widely published, and he is a trusted voice in the medical community. Now Dr. Lee is going to delve into something equally important, the foods we should avoid. To kick things off, he'll discuss the first of the three bad foods that could be harming your health. Let's hear what Dr. Lee has to say about this. Oh, a quick favor. We'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. Soda, healthy soda. Here are three things that I would actually tell you as a food as medicine researcher and as a clinician who wants to put rubber on the road to help people uh, get started uh, to do something for themselves. Three things to actually avoid. All right. Cut down or cut out. Let's call it that. Let's put it that way. Um, soda. Um, drinking soda, which is really popular. I grew up drinking soda, you know, like every, most other people. Um, uh, something to cut down and cut out. Lots and lots of added sugar to it. Okay. And even the diet sodas, which actually have um, uh, uh, non nutritive artificial sweeteners, um, they actually can also damage our circulation and damage our brain function by. In, in interfering with our gut health, which we're now beginning to realize is connected to our vision health and our brain health and our overall body health as well. So cut down, cut down or cut out sodas, whether it's diet or regular, number one. Dr. Lee just shared some eye-opening insights about the first bad food we should aim to cut down, or better yet, cut out entirely. Soda, both diet and regular. He's being kind and gentle with his advice, but let's be real, stop drinking that stuff. It's not food, and it's only harming your body, paving the way for diseases like cancer and other health issues. Now, let's dive into the next topic. Dr. Lee will talk about the so-called elixirs of the beverage world, comparing sodas to other popular drinks. It's crucial to understand what we're putting into our bodies and how these choices can either harm or help us. Let's hear what Dr. Lee has to say about these beverages and what we should be choosing instead. It's soda. The sodas that we see so commonly around us. It's part of everyday modern life, you know, for the last hundred years or so. It's interesting, the, the history of soda is really fascinating. It dates back into Europe, where um, people were trying to find traditional drinks were always tea or coffee. Of course, the most popular beverage in the world was just drinking water, um, the most important one actually as well, uh, tea and coffee following close behind. And then there's uh, wine. Right. I mean, these were for thousands of years, sort of the, the elixirs, so to speak, added to fruit juice. First, it was a mistake, I think, that was made. Actually, it became something to delight. Think of like in a you go to a carnival, you know, and, and you see some spectacle that actually is just something you walk by and you think, oh, my gosh, that's so unusual. That's delightful. That's how sodas were actually um, uh, drank. And then once actually the the big industries came in and turned it into a marketing buzz, it started to take on a life of its own from fruit juices that actually had some carbonation, which is just gas, you know, CO2, and that's okay. But what wound up happening is that they started to have less fruit, but they figured out how to put chemical flavorings that actually mimic the fruit flavoring. And then, of course, nobody really wants to have just a plain watery looking carbonated drink. So then they started to add artificial coloring and then they started to add preservatives. And however, I actually pick up something to drink, you know, from a store, a grocery store. I, you know, uh, uh, I, I'm an explorer, so I love to actually try new things. If I saw a drink in a store that seemed appealing or attractive or intri intriguing to me, I might pick it up. But the first thing I do is I take a look at the label. What is in there, right? So it should be mostly water, 
So I look for that. And then most many people don't know this, but the order in which the ingredients appear on a label, at least in the United States, is um, synonymous with their co relative concentration yeah. in the drink. And so what you want to do is it's usually water and then it's sugar. All right. So we ta just talked about that or artificial sweetener. And then you start seeing the other things behind it. And I think most people will be astounded and um, disappointed, rightfully so, that natural fruit juice is usually pretty low on a list of if you are creeped out by not being able to pronounce, understand, identify the ingredients on, 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 a, on a beverage, you're, you should follow your instincts. That's probably not something you want to put in your body because your body's not hardwired to handle those chemicals. Thank you, Dr. Lee, for those fascinating insights into the history of soda and the crucial advice on reading and understanding labels. It's incredible how much we can learn from simply being aware of what we consume. Here are some suggestions for healthy flavored water, both carbonated and plain. 1. Infused water. Citrus mint sparkler. Sparkling water with slices of lemon, lime, and fresh mint leaves. Cucumber herb delight. Plain water infused with cucumber slices, basil leaves, and a dash of lemon juice. Berry blast. Carbonated water with mixed berries, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries and a sprig of rosemary. 2. Herbal teas. Hibiscus tea sparkler. Hibiscus herbal tea chilled and mixed with sparkling water, garnished with a slice of orange. Chamomile lemon sparkler. Chamomile tea cooled and combined with sparkling water, a squeeze of lemon juice, and a honey drizzle. 3. Fruit flavored waters. Watermelon lime cooler. Pured watermelon blended with lime juice and topped with plain or carbonated water. Pineapple coconut refresher. Fresh pineapple juice mixed with coconut water and carbonated water for a tropical twist. 4. Vegetable infused waters. Cucumber basil sparkler. Muddled cucumber and basil leaves, mixed with carbonated water and a splash of apple cider vinegar. Spicy ginger cider. Grated ginger steeped in hot water, chilled, then combined with sparkling water and a dash of cayenne pepper. 5. Mindy fresh waters. Mindy melon refresher. Watermelon cubes blended with fresh mint leaves and carbonated water. Lemon ginger fizz. Lemon slices and ginger root slices steeped in hot water, chilled, then mixed with sparkling water and a touch of honey. These options provide a range of flavors and combinations that are refreshing, hydrating, and free from added sugars or artificial ingredients, making them a healthier choice compared to sugary sodas or other commercially flavored drinks. Let's find out what this next item is and why it's so important for our overall health. Potato chips. Number two, cut down on ultra processed foods. And when I, and I'll give you a concrete example. If anybody who follows sports, you know that the, the big events, whether it's the Olympics or whether it's the Super Bowl, uh, or, uh, you know, uh, people get together and what do they do? They bust out the chips. Uh, chips actually are a great example. Uh, you know, those nuclear colored chips are a great example of something that everyone loves. Okay. But they're ultra processed. They take whole foods like wheat and other types of whole grains and they machine them and extrude them and then paint them with colors and then put artificial preservatives and flavorings and seasonings all to, to do something that really might be addictive, you know, because it's hard to eat just one. Um, uh, but the bottom line is that those ultra processed foods of which I think snack chips are a great example, cut down or cut out because those actually harm our overall health defenses. They take down our shields, uh, including for our vision, including for our brain. Um, eat them every now and then if you want, but honestly, they're not good for you. Cut down or cut out. Dr. Lee just highlighted the dangers of ultra processed snack foods like chips. It's alarming to hear that these popular snacks are made from non-food chemicals, harming our overall health defenses. He emphasized that if something doesn't look like it was grown and is heavily manufactured, it's not something we should be putting into our bodies. Here are a few suggestions for healthy snacks that are nutritious and satisfying. 1. Greek yogurt with berries. A serving of Greek yogurt topped with fresh berries such as strawberries, blueberries, or raspberries and a sprinkle of nuts or seeds for added crunch. 2. Vegetable sticks with hummus, carrot sticks, cucumber slices, bell pepper strips, or celery sticks served with a side of hummus for dipping. Hummus provides protein and healthy fats, while vegetables offer fiber and vitamins. 3. Apple slices with almond butter. Crisp apple slices paired with almond butter or any nut or seed butter of your choice. 
This combination offers a mix of fiber, healthy fats, and protein. 4. Hard-boiled eggs. Hard-boiled eggs are convenient and packed with protein. They can be seasoned with a sprinkle of salt and pepper or enjoyed with a side of raw vegetables. 5. Whole grain crackers with avocado. Whole grain crackers topped with mashed avocado and a squeeze of lemon juice. Avocado provides healthy fats and fiber, while whole grain crackers offer complex carbohydrates. 6. Trail mix. Make your own trail mix with a mix of nuts like almonds, walnuts, or cashews, seeds such as pumpkin or sunflower seeds, and a small amount of dried fruit like raisins or cranberries. Be mindful of portion sizes to keep it balanced. 7. Edamame. Steamed edamame pods sprinkled with a touch of sea salt. Edamame is rich in protein and fiber, making it a satisfying and nutritious snack. 8. Cottage cheese with pineapple. Cottage cheese paired with fresh pineapple chunks. Cottage cheese is high in protein, while pineapple adds natural sweetness and vitamins. 9. Chia pudding. Chia seeds soaked in almond milk or any nut milk of your choice with a touch of honey or maple syrup and topped with fresh fruit or nuts. Chia seeds are rich in fiber and omega-3 fatty acids. These snacks are not only delicious but also provide a good balance of nutrients, including protein, healthy fats, fiber, vitamins, and minerals, to keep you satisfied between meals and support overall health. Now, let's delve deeper as Dr. Lee provides more details about ultra-processed foods and why they're so detrimental to our health. I think that, you know, what, what in general, uh, manufactured foods that transform the, the whole basic plant, plant food or animal food into a form or a substance and mixes it with other additives into a form that doesn't appear in nature and usually can be stored for an unusually long period of time in a box or a can. That's kind of the definition of something that's not so good for us. I you know, Look, and, and to be realistic, uh, we live in a society where that kind of stuff is all over the place. So and we, a lot of us have habits and some of us even like that stuff. So, you know, you're going to eat it every now and then. Dr. William Lee has just explained in detail the impact of ultra processed snacks on our health. Thank you, Dr. Lee, for shedding light on this important topic. Now, let's delve into another crucial aspect of our diet, processed meats. Highly toxic, highly carcinogenic. The third one I would actually tell you is processed meats. Processed meats, by the way, by the World Health Organization, is classified as a carcinogen, all right? We do know that actually eating processed meats is increase, increases the risk of colon cancer and esophageal and stomach cancer if you eat them a lot. Now, think about the grade school cafeteria or maybe the mom's lunch made with that sliced bologna or whatever you got at the deli. So common, right? Like we probably grew up with that kind of stuff surrounding us. We now know with modern research that those types of ultra-processed meats, bologna, salami, pepperoni, all the stuff that are made. I'm not talking about the old world, old school things that are air dried and minimally no preservatives put in them. Those are a different type of product. I'm talking about the stuff you can buy cheap at the deli that are found everywhere. They're sliced under your pizza, cut down and cut out. That is definitely they're filled with um, uh, added nitrates or added coloring, added colorings and seasonings. You get a lot of stuff on there. By the way, I had a patient once who was a USDA inspector, um, and he was sp specifically inspecting the uh, factories that were making processed meats. And he and he told me he he lit up my awareness on this because he said, you know, some of these sausages that are made, he's like, you know, they they they. Um, they make the sausage in a casing. They drop them into a vat, a swimming pool, filled with artificial chemicals and preservatives and flavorings, and just leave them there for for months. And then what happens is that you know the the casing wrinkles like your fingertips in a bathtub when a swimming pool. And it's like, and that's basically what you're actually eating. And he's like, and I said, oh really? That's that's alarming. And he said, let me tell you something that's more alarming. He's like, I used to wear rubber boots to go into this factory to in, 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 uh, inspect them. And he said, I'd have to change my boots every few months because the liquid on the floor would dissolve the rubber in my boots. And I'm like, all right, that's it. I get it. And so um, those are the three things that cut down or cut out. Soda, regular di or diet, uh, ultra processed foods like snacks and chips that are so common. And the third thing is processed meats. Dr. William Lee has just highlighted the carcinogenic risks associated with ultra processed meats, including their colorings, seasonings, and flavors, which can contribute to cancer risks. It's clear we need healthier alternatives in our diets. 
Instead of processed meats, consider options like lean cuts of organic poultry or grass-fed beef. For plant-based alternatives, try marinated tofu or tempeh, which can provide a protein-rich and flavorful substitute. Now, let's hear Dr. Lee wrap up his insights on making healthier dietary choices. I think the message that we're sending is just realize that that stuff actually forces you to take a step back in your health, not a step forward. So what you want to do is just take focus more time, more emphasis on, on eating foods that take a step forward. Because, you know, every now and then you take a step back. That's okay. As long as you keep on marching forward in terms of your health, that's what we're all looking for. And that's really based on the, the beneficial foods that we've been talking about. Please consider giving us a thumbs up, sharing this video with your friends and family, and subscribing to our channel for more valuable content on health and wellness. Your support enables us to continue delivering essential information to assist you in leading a healthier life. Thank you for watching, and as always, I wish you excellent health, wealth and happiness, with the key to vitality in your hands.